The reason you're feeling lazy and unmotivated is because you lack clarity and you lack vision. You don't know what you want and you don't know where you want to go. So the thought of getting up and working on yourself doesn't even make sense because you're like, what is it all for? Like, what am I even working for? Because if there is not a reason for the work, then the work kind of just seems like wasted time, doesn't it? So if you feel like you keep getting these bursts of energy to get up and change your life, and then it kind of just dwindles out really fast, then it could be because you aren't really clear on what exactly that you want. And we're going to fix that today because I don't want you to look back five years from now and feel like you haven't gotten anywhere in your life. You feel like you've just been running in circles and spinning your wheels because you never took the time to sit down and figure out what you actually want, where you want to go, and how you're going to get there. So we're going to do it right now together. So go ahead and grab a pen and paper because this is not a motivational speech. We're actually going to do the work and I'm going to teach you how. So step one is clarity. We need to get very clear on where we're at as of right now, or you can review 2023 as a whole in 12 different categories. We're going to rate ourselves on a scale from one to 10. One being the worst or the lowest level and 10 being the best or the highest possible level that you could reach in these categories. So the categories are body or fitness, mind, which is your mindset, faith or spirituality, family, friends or social life, environment, finances, career, romance or love, self-love, fun or adventure, and overall happiness. So whenever you're doing these ratings, I want you to be very honest with yourself. Be brutally honest with yourself, okay? Because it's not going to help you if you just put 10 on everything just to make yourself feel good. Again, this is not a motivational speech. This is actually doing the work that we need to do to improve our life. And these scores are going to be a really good indication of what we need to work on. Maybe it's going to show us some things that we've been neglecting. Maybe it's going to show us some things that we have been doing really, really good at. Either way, you need to be brutally honest with yourself whenever you're writing down your scores. And just because one of your scores is low doesn't mean you necessarily need or want to work on it. So for example, my romance or my love life is at an all-time low, but my self-love is at an all-time high. So I don't feel the need to put any energy or any effort into improving my romance or my love life score. So once you finish with all of your scores, we're going to move on to step two, which is vision. We're going to be creating a vision for what we want our life to look like. And I know you might not know what you want right now, and that is completely okay. What I want you to do is put a line down the middle of your paper. I want you to write no on the left and yes on the right. And under no, I want you to write out what you absolutely do not want your life to look like. You could pick a couple of the categories that you want to focus on right now, or you could do this for all 12 categories. And the point of this is it's going to help you get very clear on what you actually do want your life to look like. And later on down the road, whenever you're feeling unmotivated and you don't want to do the work that you know you should be doing to get to the life that you want to live, you can look back at this paper and you can read the life that you absolutely do not want to live and you can decide in that moment, do I want to get over it and just do the work so that I can get to the life that I do want to live or do I want to listen to my feelings and not do the work and be lazy and lead myself to this life that I absolutely do not want to live? So the more specific that you get on the life that you don't want to live, the better, because it's going to be more motivating for you to actually do the work when you're not feeling like it. And it's going to help you to get even more clear on the life that you do want to live. So on the right side of your paper under yes, now I want you to write out the life that you absolutely would love to live. If you could live your life Anyway, if you were the director of a movie, if you were, you know, ordering a sandwich at Subway, you can get it any way that you want. You just have to be willing to write it out and dream. Now is not the time to let your brain say, no, let's be realistic. No, it's time to dream. It's time to create a vision. I want you to write out the most absurd things if that's what you truly want. And don't let your pride and your ego get in the way. So for example, a problem that I have had and I've now grown from is I like to feel like I'm a strong, independent woman, right? But deep down, what I really want is to be in a relationship with a man that allows me to be soft and submissive. But if I let my pride win, if I let it get in the way, then I would just be blocking my own desires.
desires. And that is a very important note to remember. You are your own worst enemy. You will literally keep yourself, your pride will keep you from the life that you want to live if you allow it. So don't allow it. Get over your pride. Write out your true desires. Don't let that small voice on the inside of your head say, no, this isn't realistic. No, you can't have this. Like, it's not time for that. Throw that voice out, shut it down for right now, and write out your true desires. So pick the categories that you really wanna focus on and move them to a clean sheet of paper for step three, which is control. We're going to focus on the things that we can control in these areas. Now, this is not the time to play the victim. I have done it before, all right? I'm guilty of playing the victim in my life before. I feel like everybody has probably done it to some extent. Now is not the time to say, poor pitiful me, I'm not in control, things just happen to me. No, things in life happen for you. And the sooner you believe that, the better your life is gonna get. Because instead of asking, why is this happening to me? You're gonna start asking better questions like, what is this trying to teach me? What can I learn from this? And those two questions right there changed my entire life. It is the reason that you are watching this video right now. That is a story for a different day, but it's time to stop playing the victim and start focusing on the things that you can control. So these can be things like your mindset. If you're trying to improve your health, the food that you put in your body is in your control. Nobody is force feeding you, okay? The way that you move your body is in your control. You are in control of more than you think, all right? So really use your mind and write down all of the things, every little detail, of everything that you are in control over. This is not only going to empower you and make you feel like, okay, you know what? This is my life and I can do something about it. But a lot of times the reason that we're feeling lazy and unmotivated is because we feel like we're not in control of our own lives. We feel like things are just happening to us. We feel like, you know, the reason my life is this way is because, you know, so-and-so did this. Like, no, it's time to let that all go. Focus on what you can control. Moving on to step four, which is my favorite step in this entire process, which is detox, declutter, and delete. It's time to detox your social medias, all right? Unfollow the people that whenever you see their content, it makes you feel bad about yourself or it just brings you down. Or if you compare your body to theirs, like it's time to get rid of those accounts. There's nothing personal with them, but you just right now, you don't need to see their content or you could delete the social media apps off of your phone, which is what I had to do. So I deleted Instagram because it became too much of a distraction for me. So I just deleted that off of my phone to take away that distraction and that temptation to actually get on it every few hours. You also need to detox your friends. If you hang out with a group of friends that every time that you spend time with them, you just feel less motivated, you feel kind of sluggish, you don't really wanna get up and do anything, you just wanna be lazy or whatever it may be, Maybe they, you know, they gossip a lot and it messes with your head. You don't need to be around gossipers or complainers or just people that bring you low, all right? You don't have time for that, but you don't have to be dramatic about it either. You don't have to tell your friends, hey, you know what? I need some space. Like, I don't need to, no, like, don't, don't make it a big thing. Just fill your time up with all of these things of you working on your goals, all of these tasks, all of these new habits that you're going to be building, which we'll talk about a little bit later instead of telling your friends, hey, I can't hang out, just say like, oh, I'm doing this right now. You know, like fill up your time and you know, get a life. <laughs> and I mean that in the most loving way possible. Next, you need to declutter your life, all right? You need to clean out your closet. And there is something about cleaning out my closet and getting rid of old clothes that just makes me feel like a new person. And that's kind of what you're doing. You need to throw out or give away or sell all of those old clothes that the past version of you used to wear, but you haven't worn in three years, it's time to move on. The point is to get rid of the past version of you, all right? We're making space for that new version to grow. If you're ready to move on and create a new life, you need to let go of your old one. So 
Clean out your room, clean out your fridge, clean out your pantry, clean out your office, just clean out your space. This is not only gonna declutter your space, but it's gonna declutter your mind, all right? I promise, this is such a great feeling whenever you actually do it. Next, you need to delete old photos, delete old videos. You don't need all of those screenshots, all right? You probably haven't even gone back to look at all those things that you screenshotted in the past five years. It's time to delete them. You can also delete music off of your phone that doesn't promote the message that you wanna believe in. Music has such a powerful impact on our mind. So if you don't want to believe in the message that it is sending you, then maybe you shouldn't be listening to it. You can delete contacts off of your phone. If you know that there's someone that you shouldn't be reaching out to, like an old ex or somebody who is just not good for you, it's time to delete their number. Block them if you have to. You are allowed to do that. And also cancel all of those subscriptions that you are not using. If you don't use Amazon Prime, you don't need Amazon Prime. Most of the things are shipped for free anyways, all right? So delete all of those old subscriptions. It's gonna save you a lot of money and it's just gonna feel really good to get rid of all of these things that you no longer need in your new life. Moving on to step five, which is set specific goals. Now, personally, I like to set performance or action-based goals. So for example, for me, one of my goals is I want to train like an athlete again, but that's not specific and it's not not really action based. So instead of saying I want to train like an athlete, what I'm going to do instead is say I'm going to do an athletic style training session every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. in my local gym. And creating your goals like this is so powerful because it gives you what you're going to do, where you're going to do it, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it. So it gives you all of this clarity, which is going to be so much more motivating whenever it's time to actually do the work. So once you have your goals for your specific categories, then we're going to move on to step six, which is build simple habits. So if your goal is to start working out three days a week and currently you don't work out at all, then one of the simple habits that you can start to build is pick out your workout clothes the night before, pick out your water bottle, set your headphones out, get your shoes, get your socks, get all of this stuff that you need to get up and go to the gym first thing in the morning, have it prepared for yourself the night before. That is a very simple habit that is going to make achieving your goal of getting up and going to the gym in the morning so much more doable and so much more likely to actually happen. And step seven is get to work, all right? None of this stuff is gonna work unless you do, all right? It is completely up to you. Your life is up to you. Everybody was dealt their hand. Everybody has their struggles. But your life will be a direct result of how you respond to all of the challenges that come your way. And everything that you do in life is completely up to you. So it's time to take back that control of your life. It's time to be consistent. It's time to be disciplined. It's time to get to work. Let's do this.